It's Friday, July 19th, 2024. You're all set for your dream vacation to Europe. Bags packed, tickets in hand, excitement through the roof. But then, suddenly, chaos strikes. You miss your flight, and it's not just you. Airports, hospitals, banks, and more are thrown into a reboot death spiral. The culprit? A defective CrowdStrike update. Only a handful of times in history has a single piece of code managed to wreck computer systems worldwide. But this digital catastrophe? It wasn't hackers this time. It was the software meant to stop them. How is it that one single software bug can have such a profound and immediate impact? Well, when you look at the complexity of cybersecurity, you're always trying to stay one, excuse me, one step ahead of the adversaries. Excuse me. Man, just one second, please. In the early hours of Friday, a software update from cybersecurity giant CrowdStrike inadvertently disrupted IT systems globally. Windows machines everywhere started displaying the dreaded blue screen of death. Businesses worldwide were hit hard. Flights were grounded, patients couldn't be admitted, and even major TV networks like Sky News went offline. It started in Australia with companies running Microsoft's Windows operating system. Soon, reports of disruptions flooded in from the UK, India, Germany, the Netherlands, and the US. By Friday morning, US airlines like United, Delta, and American Airlines issued a global ground stop, halting all flights. Shockingly, this catastrophe wasn't the result of a cyber attack. It stemmed from a misconfigured update that CrowdStrike pushed out to its customers. This was completely human error and a human mistake. Adding to the chaos, Microsoft's cloud platform Azure experienced a widespread outage just the night before. But Microsoft claims these two IT failures are unrelated. So, what turned your dream vacation into a nightmare? Ironically, a flawed software update meant to protect us from cyber threats caused one of the most significant digital disruptions in history. The irony here is that in cybersecurity, we're always being told to install the updates. Here, of course, doing the right thing got you in lots of trouble. In 2011, a team of cybersecurity experts in Austin, Texas, founded CrowdStrike to protect devices and combat digital threats. Coincidentally, one of its co-founders, George Kurtz, was also the CTO at McAfee during a similar software disaster in 2010 that caused widespread system crashes. CrowdStrike quickly attracted millions in funding from Silicon Valley giants like Google Ventures. By June 2013, they launched their first product, CrowdStrike Falcon, software that protects against various types of cyber attacks. While CrowdStrike's main focus is blocking hackers and malware, they've also taken on major investigations. In 2014, they tackled North Korea's cyber attack on Sony Pictures. And in 2016, they investigated the Russian hack of the Democratic National Committee. CrowdStrike software doesn't just run on Microsoft Windows. It also runs on Apple's Mac OS and the Linux OS. This broad compatibility means they can protect a wide array of devices, including computers, servers, and mobile devices. CrowdStrike's reach is vast. They protect over 29,000 customers worldwide, from banks to hospitals to airports. Notable clients include Sony Pictures, Target, Amazon, Alphabet, and Intel. Fast forward to today. CrowdStrike has grown into a cybersecurity giant valued at around $83 billion, protecting 538 out of the Fortune 1000 companies. But even giants can stumble. The recent outage caused their stock price to plummet by 13% early on the day of the event. So, how did such a big company make such a massive mistake? While the outage led to many conspiracy theories, the actual cause was a technical error. To understand the recent CrowdStrike outage, let's first see how CrowdStrike's Falcon platform operates and what went wrong. At the heart of CrowdStrike's protection is the Falcon platform, a powerful antivirus system installed on endpoints like laptops, servers, and routers. Falcon sensors watch over the device 24-7, scanning for any suspicious activities, just like a security guard checking surveillance footage. If it detects something unusual, it quickly raises an alarm and takes action using advanced artificial intelligence and analytics. Falcon operates in a super-sensitive area of the device's brain, 
called kernel mode, where only the most trusted and important tasks are handled. This is like giving the security guard keys to every room in the building. Now, let's see what went wrong. CrowdStrike sent an update to all these Falcon sensors on July 19th, 2024. Unfortunately, this update had a mistake. The update included a file with a tiny error, similar to a typo in the security manual, causing the Falcon sensors to malfunction and crash the device completely, resulting in the dreaded blue screen of death. Because Falcon operates in such a critical part of the system, any error here can cause major issues. The faulty update was like handing the security guard a defective key, which ended up locking down the entire building. But you might be wondering, why didn't they just pre-test the update before deploying it to millions? Security experts believe that the frequent nature of these updates likely led to the faulty code slipping through the usual quality checks. Ideally, such updates should be rolled out to a limited pool of customers first to avoid widespread issues. However, this step appears to have been skipped, leading to the massive global outage. Because the crash was so deep in the system, fixing it required someone to manually restart each device and remove the faulty file, which is a long and tedious process. So in order to fix this problem, every single device has to be touched by hand. But how big was CrowdStrike's update really? In short, big, really big. The CrowdStrike outage disabled an estimated 8.5 million computers worldwide, costing Fortune 500 companies at least $5.4 billion. This makes it one of the largest cyber events in history. To put this in perspective, let's compare it to past major events. Remember the WannaCry ransomware attack in 2017? It affected around 200,000 computers in over 150 countries, disrupting critical services and causing up to $4 billion in damages. Another significant incident was the NotPetya cyber attack in 2017, which primarily targeted Ukraine but had global ramifications, costing companies over $10 billion. Similar to these incidents, the CrowdStrike outage hit multiple sectors hard. Banks experienced downtime, leading to financial transaction delays. Hospitals faced system failures, causing delayed treatments and increased patient risks. Over 5,000 flights were cancelled within hours of the outage, leading to widespread chaos. CrowdStrike's investors weren't safe either. Before the update, CrowdStrike's stock was considered a strong performer. There's one company that seems to be immune because it's the, now the king of cyber, which is CrowdStrike. Now they report June 4th. This company has yet to miss a quarter since it came public. George Kurtz, and they have a terrific business. However, after the faulty update, the company's share price dropped 32% in 12 days, losing 25 billion in market value. This reflected investor concerns about the reliability of their services. Finally, the chaos has led to an increase in phishing attacks around the world. Researchers at SecureWorks reported a rise in CrowdStrike-themed domain registrations. Hackers use these to create fake websites that impersonate CrowdStrike, tricking IT managers and the public into revealing sensitive information like passwords. And how do you compensate partners for the worst IT outage in history? Apparently, you send them a $10 Uber Eats voucher. While a nice gesture, partners were shocked to find that the voucher didn't work. So, what's here to learn? CrowdStrike and similar firms must prioritize quality control checks on updates before deployment, especially on a Friday. CrowdStrike said it planned to implement a staggered deployment strategy to reduce the risk of large numbers of computers and servers being affected by an error at once. This outage also serves as a stark reminder of our dependence on IT and software and the danger of monopolization. Just 15 companies worldwide account for 62% of the market in cybersecurity products and services. When a system maintained by these few vendors fails, it can become a single point of failure with widespread impact, affecting emergency services, hospitals, airports, and government agencies. This brings up certain questions. Are we too digital? And are we too reliant on a few big companies? As the world recovers from the largest IT outage in history, it's clear that the real cost extends beyond financial losses. It affects the lives of those who rely on these critical services. For now, as cybersecurity expert Kevin Beaumont wrote on Twitter, 
All of this shall pass in a month or two, but it's likely CrowdStrike will be rebuilding its brand for some time. It's all about trust, and that trust has been affected by today, no doubt. Do you want to find a more reliable antivirus software than CrowdStrike? Check out our comparison on softwarelab.org. Want to learn about malicious software? Watch this video next, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay safe online.